Eh, buonasera a tutti, eh, per me è un grande onore, un honor and pleasure for me to speak to so many people. I know there are several hundreds of people connected today, right now, to talk about the situation in our industry and uh, our EMA International, and especially EMA Digital Review, the topic of the day. Let me briefly talk about the current situation of the industry. This is the first time we can get to see, e see each other after so many challenging months. We've been affected by a major tsunami. It had never happened to me in my life to receive an order by the government to shut down uh, businesses and limit the personal, personal freedom of people. It's been a dramatic period for many of us, for our work and uh, for the people working with us. Uh, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and we see many people um, willing to do things and start talking together about the future and uh, start meeting again. It's been a dramatic economic crisis uh, that has been affecting the whole world, a global economic crisis. Just let me give you some figures. Uh, the economic crisis uh, that affected our industry led to a decline in global production by 5%, according to the FMI. And uh, if we make a comparison with the previous uh, crisis in 2008 and 9, the global uh, GDP had dropped by 0.1% according to IMF data, just to give you an idea of the impact of a crisis on our businesses. If we look at um, emerging economies and advanced economies, you can see that more advanced countries have been affected the hardest, and there will be a slow uh, recovery, a slower recovery. This is uh, OECD estimates that you can see on the slides. Uh, according to OECD, there are two possible scenarios, two possible scenarios for the near future. In one scenario, the world is starting again tomorrow, next year, plus 5.2 percent, so with a good recovery of the losses, provided the health emergency is being controlled. But if we have a re-escalation of the emergency next year, we'll get to a 2.8 percent growth rate. It will take a little bit longer to get there. If we consider the largest economies in Europe, Germany, France, Italy, and Spain will hit 6% next year. We're starting from minus 12% this year. So a heavy situation in terms of social impact. Our uh, industry has always been quite lucky. We've always been linked to the food industry. Unfortunately, our industry has been uh, hit very hard uh, by the crisis. If we think that 2019 was not a particularly favorable year for the European economy, economy and uh, agricultural machinery, according to AgriEvolution last year, there was uh, a global decline by 5.6% uh, of the number of tractors sold uh, in the world. Uh, there's a big difference. Uh, we have the Indian market losing 9.1%, the Chinese market losing 9.9%, uh, .9%, and uh, as a counter trend, uh, um, figures being smaller, we can uh, see Europe growing 7.9% and the US market growing by 3.7%. This is the snap snapshot of 2019, the snapshot of 
to 2020 is not very different. In the first two months, there was a kind of uh, standstill on the market uh, with the um, American uh, market in the first quarter minus 7.2%. Um, so the, the, the COVID was not having a considerable impact yet, and the Italian and the European market dropping by over 4%. You can see a Russian market minus 6% and Japanese market uh, uh, minus 30% in the first quarter of 2020. And then the tsunami uh, arrives, uh, and we can see that the European market uh, has uh, a minus 23.5%, uh, May 22.6%. The first uh, um, months, you can see in Europe, uh, there's an uh, um, average decline in value by 12%. So as a matter of fact, uh, the situation's getting quite heavy. Unfortunately, there are no reliable forecasts available, so we have to rely on climate surveys. Uh, Agri-evolution looked at the month of May, and uh, we can see the general climate is quite unfavorable. The pessimistic view on the market uh, is 63% uh, globally. If we look at Europe, it's 61% of pessimists uh, um, with respect to the market situation, so there's not much of a difference. Uh, if we look at the American market, is 72% um, uh, of pessimists, uh, and Japan hits 91% of pessimists. Uh, as a counter trend, we can see some market, the Turkish entrepreneurs see uh, a positive trend in 86% of cases. Russian 73% uh, see a um, positive outlook forecasts uh, for the next six months, according to AgriVolution. Um, say more or less the same. So we start seeing the impact of some uh, policies uh, on uh, demand. Uh, markets such as Russia, India, and China are um, experiences, good market trends, thanks to stra scrapping incentives on investments and subsidies for agriculture that are pushing the agricultural machinery market in these countries. Um, this is quite interesting too. This is the global demand. Um, data provided by expert planning, measuring exports and import. Uh, we can see uh, in April, uh, agricultural machinery uh, was a minus 25% in imports and exports uh, in Europe, uh, ranging from minus 25 to 35% with negative peaks in France and the UK right now. And uh, North Americans, uh, uh, North America, Canada, Mexico, and United States are not doing uh, much better, uh, and that uh, that has an impact on our companies uh, that uh, are important markets for these products. Um, as a counter trend, we can see an increase in imports in some countries. China, for instance, uh, is uh, importing again. Japan increased uh, imports, and same for Korea. Kazakhstan is back to growing um, in uh, the um, agricultural machinery area. So coming closer to uh, Italy, and we know there are many journalists and exhibitors connected to from abroad. The Italian market has experienced a decline in the first two months, January and February. That was the European trend. Registrations of tractors were minus 5.5 percent in January, minus 1.5 percent in in February. As you can see, things getting worse considerably uh, since March, uh, minus 34 in May, minus 23 in April, minus 24 in May. June, we start seeing some uh, improvement. I'm not talking about growth. We're talking about uh, the slower decline. Um, 
So throughout the first six months, uh, we're just minus 18 uh, percent of registrations. There used to be 1,024 tractors in 2019, the first six months. It's now 8,222 tractors uh, the first six months with forecasts uh, for the uh, to year end to 15 to 16,000 versus about 18,000 last year. If we look at sales, uh, you can see medium to high power machines that are um, doing better uh, thanks to tax uh, credits, the Sabatini law, uh, so below 100 HP, uh, um, uh, much more affected. Uh, and uh, all areas uh, are being affected, as you can see, the hardest the, 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 the combined harvesters are losing only 10%, so minus 10 is not too bad in this period. And we're almost happy that uh, uh, the handlers are only minus 5.3%. It almost looks like a growth. Let's look at the Italian market of the last few years. Uh, uh, the uh, used machinery market has uh, increased two folds, but that uh, came to a stop at the beginning of the year. Uh, this is the first five months, uh, minus 19 percent of new tractors registered, but used tractors, uh, um, you know, that changed hands uh, is minus 28 percent. This has to be selectively interpreted. Uh, there have been incentives, especially for medium to high power machines that basically um, block the, the, the used machinery market, uh, used uh, medium to high machine purchases uh, was almost uh, uh, cancelled by incentives. Uh, so the used machine market was considerably affected by, by this trend. Um, and But it's going to pick up uh, pretty fast uh, um, if uh, governments, uh, uh, European governments Government to stop providing incentives for um, new uh, machines. Let's look at the gardening market. It didn't start very well, minus 23 percent the first quarter. Uh, that was surprisingly so for many operators. Uh, but the second quarter didn't do that bad. In fact, compared to last year, it's a plus 7.7 percent. True enough, last year the gardening market uh, uh, suffered in the months of April in May, um, Italy, um, in Italy, weather was very bad and rainy, uh, so gardening machines uh, didn't do very well. But in spite of being negative, because the the two uh, semester, uh, the two quarters together um, are actually declining, the market uh, uh, is uh, picking up. As to the forecasts. Uh, for agricultural machinery, uh, well, it's almost impossible to make reliable forecasts. Let me uh, go back to the last few years and look at the general trend and try and draw some conclusions. We're talking about world trade, uh, so global imports and exports. In 2001, uh, world trade of agricultural machinery was 40 billion euros. Uh, last year, it was uh, one billion, 100 billion euros, so the demand for agricultural machinery uh, globally is increasing progressively. There have been some ups and downs. There was a negative peak, peak in 2008, 9, and 10, and then a recovery. This year, forecast to year end for agricultural machining globally. Uh, so, it shows a minus 15% from 100 billion down to 85. Uh, Forecasts for 2021 are quite favorable, showing a market recovery uh, going back to uh, previous levels, uh, recovering 13% for 2023. We should uh, stabilized, uh, have a stabilized growth around 4 to 5%. And this at a macro level so far. 
and uh, the uh, Italian agricultural machinery industry should try and uh, um, find uh, our customers again. Our customers do need agricultural machinery, and we have to win their trust again. And our customers need to see what uh, our industry can offer, the best we can offer. And, uh, Feder Unacoma uh, is an association and a trade fair organizer at the same time. We had to uh, postpone AIMA for a few months uh, in order to meet uh, the need for um, better s safety, so avoiding crowding, etc., and taking all the necessary precautions. But we had to invent a completely new type of trade fair that will be described to you today, and hopefully we're meeting your expectations. Um, this is a dark uh, period, a challenging period, a social distancing, no physical meetings. We hope to be able to get to meet people using electronic platforms, so remotely. The AMA Digital Preview will be held in November uh, instead of the physical AMA and will be focusing on globalization or internationalization in cooperation with Italian uh, foreign trade uh, agency. We are preparing a platform uh, with many B2B meetings. Uh, we're organizing meetings with operators from over 40 countries. For 40 countries uh, that uh, we chose not based on the, um, uh, this, the health emergency or flying restrictions, etc., but only based on the potential of uh, our agricultural machinery industry on those markets. Um, among the core markets we'll be focusing on, uh, we have Mexico, Canada, Russia. Uh, there's considerable uh, need for mechanization in agriculture. Hopefully, we can restore our image as an industry and uh, use the AMA Digital Preview as a launching pad for our physical AMA to be held in February. I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. It's been a great pleasure for me to open this session and spend a few words on the market to give you a general scenario before getting to the contents of our two trade fairs. I'll give the floor to Simona Rapastella, who will uh, explain to you what's in store for all of us and what we're planning to launch in the next few months. Thank you very much, uh, the Chairman. You. I'd like uh, I to would also join like to our join Chairman me. in thanking you all very much. There's so many of you, hundreds of people connected uh, right now. Thank you. We've been informed uh, by um, our organizers about the number of participants. We'd like to thank the Italian and international exhibitors, journalists, uh, representatives of institutions, associations, uh, and all organization and uh, inter uh, uh, trade agency managers from all over the world. Uh, so it's such uh, a broad uh, um, scenario for all of us. Uh, uh, let me tell you immediately that you can ask any question using the chat. Um, well, there's a very large number of participants, so it will not be possible for you to take the floor and ask your questions directly. We'll be um, collecting your questions. Some of them will be answered uh, live, and others will be answered uh, starting tomorrow. Some of your questions will be certainly very interesting. You will have doubts, uh, curiosities, and observations. Uh, and based on that, uh, we'll prepare a document uh, that will be circulated to all of you and posted on our website. AMA Digital Preview, EPD. COVID uh, probably accelerated an ongoing uh, change process that was already in the making uh, for all of us, uh, especially uh, with the 
coming uh, digital uh, world, uh, the strength of the virtual world. Uh, we've been obliged to change uh, our reference points, uh, our uh, ways of reasoning, our strategies, and not only our um, lifestyles and our behaviors. Uh, and uh, AMA International that uh, uh, had uh, uh, already repositioned itself somehow, had uh, gone through a revamping of its own strategy, decided to take the challenge again and uh, then try and enhance its own value, the value of its brand at a, at a global level and the, the strength of our industry. So let me now spend some words on the platform and the project. Um, this platform is not meant to be a live or remote reproduction of the trade fair. The real AIMA International will be held in February. The virtual AIMA, the, the digital experience is, an, is another product, product, is another dimension, another journey, and we'd like to take you through this new journey. We'll be virtually traveling through how to universal products and services, a new way of promoting companies. The platform is almost entirely three-dimensional. So we're talking about a journey. It's I'm saying it for real. We'll never have a, the impression that we're just looking at something still and static, but we'll actually be um, moving uh, and wandering inside this uh, uh, AMA, this new world uh, made by businesses, co scientific contents, and people, a completely new uh, trade fair uh, experience or exhibition experience is uh, very much oriented to the future. And right now, it is a unique experience uh, uh, at a global level. Of course, we uh, we were very uh, daring in uh, uh, challenging the digital world. Other uh, trade fair organizers have tried to do uh, the same, but this is a, an entirely three-dimensional um, development of a virtual trade fair. So we are the first one that have actually been able to to make it. Um, the digital dimension is not real, is not live. We never ever thought of virtually reproposing the trade fair you're used to visiting because it, it, it's still there. This is our strength, this aim, the strength of an exhibition that will never be replaced or replaceable by a digital product. The digital product is an add-on, is added value. It's it's a hybrid um, which is capturing the future, but the live exhibition, in our opinion, will never be replaced or replaceable. So our goal is uh, for AMA to win the channels of distinguishing itself uh, in uh, on the international scenario, offering a new promotional tool to companies and to our, uh, stakeholders. Uh, the journey through the AIMA digital dimension is not um, is not. Uh, uh, dangerous uh, or is left to chance, not left to chance. It's extremely practical. You have um, real and concrete uh, um, contents. Uh, we'll be able to completely visit uh, the exhibition in uh, the digital rendering of AMA. Uh, 
uh, you'll be able to visit all the uh, stands. Uh, uh, and so if uh, the companies, uh, there will be 2,000 companies in February at uh, Live AIMA, there will be 2,000 exhibition uh, stations with their products and features uh, with a very amazing promotional and aesthetic quality. We can enter the spaces, we can have a live interaction with the company representatives, uh, get information on product innovations, and also uh, have an exchange uh, with uh, um, scientific experts and get to mm, mm, receive uh, scientific updates, uh, with, as is always the case for AIMA about, uh, uh, you know, uh, scientific uh, innovation international appointments. Uh, as uh, stated by our chairman, the international dimension is for us extremely important, and that applies to our digital platform as well. Therefore, exhibitors will be able to uh, organize B2B meetings with uh, um, uh, trade operators from all over the world and uh, the official operators that were selected, uh, selected with the support of the Italian trade agency. It will be able to take part in live events and interactive shows. Uh, if there's something that guided us uh, during the development, artistic development of this platform, it was uh, um, the idea of conceiving attractive shows and initiatives that would uh, otherwise be quite hard to set up uh, in a traditional exhibition. So what happens? What do we see when we enter this new world? Uh, we can log in or log on, and uh, we, uh, we have three gates. Uh, the three main junction points of our project, uh, the three gates are the following. The product planets, so the 14 sectors that AIMA specializes in, and you know them by heart, so and all um, different manufacturers and companies. Then the second jun junction, the second gate, is the team, the value of people, their skills, and uh, their support. Um, age 24 and AIMA Agora, the AIMA Square and in the International Square of Agricultural Mechanization. An ambitious, uh, an ambitious project uh, that should be experienced as a real and live uh, square. This is the idea. We're going to, we're, we're seeing this world coming closer and closer in the platform, presenting the three gates to us, and we'll have a chance to enter one of them at the time, all of them, and we'll never. Uh, get lost uh, because navigating this world will be extremely easy. A horizontal navigation with arrows pointing us to the different areas uh, and uh, helping us around uh, completely uh, throughout uh, the uh, visit uh, of the platform. There's something wrong in my presentation, says uh, Simona. Uh, so the uh, project, the product planets, uh, the first uh, gate, uh, the 14 specialization areas uh, of AIMA, the uh, companies uh, and the products uh, will be presented and promoted uh, a very attractive uh, uh, element uh, characterizing this uh, uh, section is that, is that the planet will all be um, uh, surrounded 
by their um, own world, uh, the way the machines are used in the field, on the fields, in the countryside. Tractors will be set, for instance, uh, in a cornfield, for instance, uh, and so that will be extremely uh, suggestive for all of it. In a traditional exhibition, it would otherwise be impossible to, uh, uh, to provide such a digital reality, and this is actually possible in a virtual world. In this section, uh, navigation will be extremely user-friendly. As for the rest of the platform, it will be extremely easy finding whatever you're looking for because, of course, uh, um, search will be extremely easy by name of company, by product, uh, by uh, product uh, area. Mm. So it is uh, going to be extremely user friendly and easy to navigate. What about um, exhibitor spaces? Uh, we uh, the idea was uh, using the same kind of uh, spaces uh, as in the real exhibition. We subdivided the virtual spaces into six non-places because we're going to find them in a virtual world, but they will then uh, become places that you can visit and you can use um, and experience. So they've been subdivided into six groups uh, uh, corresponding to the different uh, spaces attributed to different exhibitors at AMA in February 2021. Um, each company will be given a, an entrance with a desk, uh, with an avatar, uh, moving and inviting people to come in. Then uh, companies will be able to promote usual products such as uh, uh, corporate videos, uh, innovative products, the website, a product catalog, and uh, the, we're going to have uh, the, the, the towers uh, that will be set uh, in uh, all uh, spaces uh, where you'll be able to make appointments, a chat, and use a bi-directional agenda. And that will be possible both for visitors and exhibitors. Uh, uh, who are trying to promote their own agendas or um, make appointments with their own uh, customers and with their own audience. So there will be some common features for all exhi exhibitors, but of course there will be different dimensions, uh, different designs, and different layouts, uh, and uh, different amounts of uh, um, digital elements uh, that will be able to appreciate uh, from an electronic viewpoint. We're talking about uh, three-dimensional products uh, that. Uh, will be somehow experienced from within. Uh, each and every space will be equipped with customized elements. So there are some common features, but each exhibitor will be able to personalize elements of their virtual stands. I'm talking about the color of the walls, uh, the uh, intensity of lighting that we um, designed for uh, the virtual stands, uh, different motives and different styles that will be personalized. So it's a live platform. Uh, it will never have uh, uh, the impression of getting bored because, of course, we're going through a three-dimensional experience. We're entering, traveling, and coming back, a turn right. We uh, see a video, we click on a video, we listen to it. It's not just uh, uh, seeing the video but interacting with it because, of course, we're working on visual and emotional formulas which are really calling people's attention, musical pop-ups, uh, um, 
that invite uh, people to attend an important event about to start in the Agora, in the uh, square, in the main square. So we can see uh, this is a working process. Uh, you can see the big dimensional renderings of different spaces. Uh, you can see the first three spaces. The layout and furnishing is extremely refined. We never thought about uh, a, a you know ordinary layout structure. We really wanted to provide something really nice in terms of style. And uh, you, you see, you can see that uh, layout uh, tend to change. And then the basic version is a square, uh, is a square shape then a rectangular, a circular shape as uh, the sizes go up until it and we have an oval space on ground floor on two floors and then we'll have the stand that are traditionally the largest over 800 square meters that will be oval in shape on three levels and so it will be possible to have this vertical dimension, which is not uh, uh, possible to explore in such a detail. So uh, let me come to the end of the product uh, planets uh, and uh, the stands. Let me now come to the second day, the gate and junction. Uh, contact the team. This is our facility. We'll have offices and avatars with our faces. Uh, you'll get a chance to recognize each and every one of us uh, in this virtual space. Uh, and the uh, services uh, and support will be provided uh, to visitors and exhibitors, uh, and we'll have the organiz organizing secretary and then the press office, the Federjuna Coma team will be all of us live uh, 24 hours a day on the platform. And the third, um, the, the third section is the Ema Agora. This is uh, the um, the central square of the Bologna Trade Fair. is uh, is the heart is the heart of Ema. Uh, is uh, many things are going to happen there. It's going to be very very active. There's a live section. We'll have uh, a stage that will be alive uh, day and night uh, with unexpected shows, uh, surprise events. Well, we'll have uh, live uh, shows and events, uh, and the audience uh, knows uh, will know they will be live at a given day at a given time and then we'll have the uh, AMA TV because of course we'll, uh, we'll have AMA Netflix of agricultural machinity, machinery will be uploading on demand all uh, live recorded contributions in the Agora coming from different companies and different exhibitors as live uh, contributions that will uh, uh, contribute to this uh, uh, TV flow. In the AMA world, which is the scientific content of the Agora, we will have webinars, uh, training seminars, and also events organized by the companies within the Agora, international presentations and also product novelties. Finally, the B2B area. The B2B area is the area where companies will be able to do the matching with business operators, as is the case in AMA International, but they will do this on the platform in the conference rooms of the company spaces. Within these rooms, they can really do anything, show anything. They can even plan their B2B meetings. And as we'll see later, this part is also extremely important because we have already thought of 
important possibilities for this area. This is the Ema Agora. We will be entering this area. We will go on stage. We'll go through the gates. Uh, we'll be on the lawn. Uh, I mean, you see this image. It's static now. It's impressive, but we'll be living within this area. These are the access gates to the main areas that I was describing before. What did we want to do with this, uh, with the EDP? We want it to actually intercept the future. We wanted to take challenges. We wanted to make uh, courageous choices. We wanted to speed up because of this emergency. Actually, the COVID-19 pandemic has helped us accelerate this project, but uh, we would have had this project anyway within two or three years' time. But we implemented this in just a couple of months in order to approach the future. The key words of the EDP are very many and important ones in our opinion. First of all, this project in intends to be unique in the FAIR scenario worldwide. It's an on-demand project to add value, add contacts, and also give mechanization contributions, expressing the value of our industry, of our world, and also contemporaneity, contemporary character. We talk about agricultural mechanization. The world must know that our technology level is very high. We've been talking about 4.0 oh for many years uh, in farming we talk about interconnections artificial intelligence we thought that ama international could take this challenge with such a project which is very contemporary we have to show something to the public and to the world the value of contacts i've just mentioned this you know being able to contact all those that are interested in our world is gold to us. So those that will register on the platform will potentially be new leads that we contact. Now, some important information. I told you about the platform. I told you how we developed it and built it. It's a pleasure for us to give you some important information concerning contents, activities, and work that we will be developing within the platform. And actually, all these activities are closely connected to the physical AMA, AMA International that you're all aware of. First of all, the platform will be used by the exhibitors already starting from mid-September, the first 10 days in September. The companies will have a management interface, and within their rooms, they can upload all the IT products that they have received as per technical sheets. And then, starting from September, the visitors uh, will be able to register in the main events of the AMA Agora and will be informed by us. We strongly believe in this project, and this is uh, shown by the numbers by the figures of the media plan investment dedicated to the EDP. We strongly believe in the value of this project, and we believe this project can raise expectations for the real event in February. The media plan involves 81 dailies, conventional and web-based, six TV groups, 22 radio broadcasters, almost 200 
print media from Italy and abroad in Google promotion for 45 days before the EDP in 45 countries in the world and 10 languages and advertising campaigns on all social networks. Another aspect that characterizes AIMA is internationalization. As the president said before, we're actually focusing on all these numbers. We've been very practical and concrete right from the beginning. We have set ourselves ambitious goals. The geographical areas we're considering are the ones that I put on the slide. I do believe that if there is a country in the world that has more difficulties joining AMA physically, well, probably it's countries from the geographical areas that I've listed on this slide, and we can actually contact them. We're talking about 40 countries and 250 business uh, operators. The B2B meetings with these uh, operators will last uh, longer, probably 10 days, so longer than the period from uh, the 11th to the 15th of November, a few days before the official opening of the digital preview and also after the official closure of the digital preview so that the presumably many companies wishing to meet these companies can and operators can do so in an easy way. And also the draft program already includes very distinguished participants within the Agora space. Then there will be the awarding ceremony. Then we will have the Aja assembly, then the tractor of the year 2020, many print media and publishing houses have been negotiating with us for initiatives uh, within the digital preview. Club of Bologna, EMA Campus, Mac Agri Jobs, uh, Bio Habitat, uh, territorial focuses, I mean, really very many. I just mentioned some of the important uh, appointments that will take place within the AMA Digital Preview. We strongly believe that this is a tool that add, adds value to our trade show. It also adds a strategic value to the skillful promotional abilities of our industry and really approaching the future in a period of emergency such as the one that we are experiencing at the moment worldwide is uh, the function of uh, a federation such as ours and uh, of an important trade show as AMA International Worldwide. We've also prepared um, a tool that will give you a general overview of the platform. You can also use it starting from tomorrow because it's available to all the world that we belong to, and I'll show it to you now. One, zero, all engine running.
And now, we'll uh, take the questions at the end, taking advantage of the presentation of the EDP, we have also prepared something to show you about the AMA in February 2021. We're organizing the physical AMA for February 2021, even if we're busy preparing AMA Digital Preview. Of course, in the physical AMA, we have to respect safety protocols that are very strict, but we want this trade show to be extremely successful. So the floor goes quickly to our president that will tell us about the novelties that will be implemented in the real fair. As Simona was saying, the AMA digital preview is a way to approach our physical fair, AMA International, with uh, very important uh, novelties. First of all, we have set up uh, a new demonstration area for uh, technologies for agricultural biomass, uh, forest biomass, uh, and also the territory, the landscape, and the prevention of ge geological risks. It will be between uh, Hall 35 and 37 of the fair grounds. In the same area outdoors, there will be special uh, areas uh, to see the uh, tractor of the air, which is our Champions League in uh, agricultural mechanics. And then the new Hall 37 will be next to that area. If you have been in Bologna recently, you know that um, actually the construction of Hall 37 only stopped during the lockdown. It will be completed by autumn. So we'll have new spaces, very functional ones, beautiful ones, uh, in order to display our planets uh, in a much better way, as uh, Simona was saying before. Talking about logistics, uh, there will be a restyling of the signage at AMA International so that it's easier for our visitors to follow the signs and also the quadriportico area has become larger, more space, a new style for the new products, the innovations which are really important for the future. One of the main points of AMA has always been internationalization. We are doing a tremendous job, um, also with the help uh, of uh, ICHA, the Italian Trade Agency, and uh, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, we expect that by February 2021, we'll be able to bring more than 500 operators from 80 different countries to the physical AMA. It's going to be a a tremendous effort on the part of the Italian Trade Agency and also Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but the internationalization is actually the most important part of our affair. This makes us very proud, and also the loyalty of our customers uh, has made us very proud. Well, actually, we had only a few producers that left us due to internal problems. Well, we are aiming at safety to a large extent at AMA. It will be one of the most important and first events held in Italy after the COVID-19 pandemic. We have prepared a safety protocol for the whole fairgrounds and common areas. It's really impressive, and we would like to actually tell you about the pillars, the main pillars of this safety program so that you feel safe. Both the visitors and the exhibitors feel safe 
considering the high safety standards that we will be implementing. I'll give the floor back to Simona now. I'll go quickly through this uh, presentation. Well, this is actually a very important aspect. Um, we uh, don't want anyone to instrumentalize AMA International as an unsafe affair. We would not even dream of um, putting people's health in danger. You know, we don't do this towards us, and we wouldn't do the same towards our visitors. We feel we have a duty to respect uh, safety, to safeguard people's health. So at this conference, uh, we would like to highlight this very clearly. EMA International um, and the Bologna Fairgrounds uh, will be one of the safest places uh, to be in. Let me briefly go through a plan, a draft plan, which we are already implementing, even if uh, the fair is uh, will be in uh, February, but we are already arranging things with the Bologna Fair. First of all, um, how the access is organized. Having access to the fairgrounds uh, will require practices that we've become familiar with in the past few months. For example, measuring uh, temperature through portals uh, with infrared cameras uh, and also an IT uh, system um, with QR code uh, in order to count uh, the people entering the fair. We'll be able to enter also with your own devices uh, without paper documents uh, that can have uh, imprints uh, and be dangerous, bacteriologically speaking. There will be social distancing in uh, the lines uh, to the turn piles, uh, the turnstiles, uh, the entrance uh, will be signed easily in a user-friendly way. The one meter distance uh, will have to be respected. And also the online tickets uh, will be so as to keep the overall uh, visitors number under control and keep the whole flow of visitors under control. Furthermore, access uh, will be allowed only if people wear a mask. And also, the catalog will be digital for the same reasons that I was describing before. Here you see some examples. You see people lining up, uh, respecting social distancing. There are those circles where people can stop in order to queue up and have access to the fair. That's another example. And then, the overall organization of the fair considers very important elements that the fair is uh, predisposing. We would like to add even more initiatives uh, to this uh, as the AMA organizers so that the level of safety is really very, very high. Nevertheless, um, these are the general um, measures already put in place. Sanitation, for example, all um, uh, exhibition areas, common areas, uh, toilets will be sanitized several times a day. There will be adequate air recirculation complying with the safety protocols that apply also to smaller areas. Then there will be sanitizing gel dispensers everywhere and also separate waste collection. The aisles are larger, wider. AMA has always had problems 
with the width of the aisles uh, because uh, we've always received lots of requests uh, for exhibition space and the areas um, and the booths and the stands uh, were always uh, sold out so we had to keep the aisles a bit less wide than we want it to but in the future and starting from the next edition we will have to leave the aisles much wider and then some more initiatives there is a wi-fi control room and as you can see from the map it will detect heat maps the control room will be managed by the Fair of Bologna to see whether there are large gatherings of people, two large gatherings of people. There will be a connection between the control room and the officials that are scattered throughout the Fair of Bologna and will keep an eye on the flow of people and gatherings of people within the fairgrounds because they have to be regulated. Furthermore, special signs will be positioned to differentiate entrance and exit to the various pavilions and then, of course, other signs in multiple languages. Furthermore, the refreshment points. I was telling you that all services will be digital and managed through apps. This will also be the case for bars and restaurants. We'll be able to book our table at the restaurant. Of course, there will be more refreshment points and social distancing will be respected there as well. We can also use an app to ask the catering services to bring food to us at the booth, specifying the name of the company and other information. And this is to avoid that we have too large gatherings and too many people compared to what is actually allowed. Then knowing what the situation is like for B2B meetings, we will uh, hold B2B meetings using wider tables uh, so that the people sitting at the table will have the minimum distance of one meter. The wardrobe will have a cellophane covering so that we can protect uh, the objects there. And another aspect uh, is the availability of uh, a physician and first aid service uh, all day long uh, from nine o'clock in the morning until uh, the fair closes. Psychologically, this is also very important and it's a way of showing attention towards people who come to the fair and want to do so in a safe way. Outside the fairgrounds, we'll probably have outdoor areas where people can stop, for example, to wait for a taxi or a bus, respecting social distancing. The shuttle service is also a very important aspect. As the AMA international organizers, we've always organized uh, shuttle services to and from the fair, to and from the airport or city center. All these shuttle buses will be sanitized several times a day. And also general organization 
in relation to exhibitors. Exhibitors will also have to stick to certain requirements when designing their exhibition spaces with more ventilation, the booths, the stands have to be more open, allowing for easy access and exit from the stands. This is an example of how a compulsory path could be like inside a stand to allow people in and allow them to go out through a specific path. Concerning the cleaning of the exhibition spaces, you know, these spaces will be sanitized several times a day, as I said, and there will be uh, protocols for night cleaning as well. And night cleaning will be of a superior level even. Some general rules, let me quickly go through them. You know, entrance using a mask, then uh, temperature is taken. A terminal outside has to control the flow for the stand outfitters, uh, the people that will install uh, the stands too, and then uh, areas for the takeaway food and so on and so forth. Some more general rules which are currently implemented but will be made even stricter. For example, planning the uh, presence of the stand outfitters and also our control over the stand installation procedures because we will have to make sure that all the booths, all the stands are sufficiently open, allowing for an adequate path through which people can enter and leave the stand. All general uh, services will be uh, managed through the app of AMA International in a dedicated fashion. As you can see, this protocol considers so many aspects. Of course, we will add initiatives if necessary in order to reassure the visitors and the world of AMA International even further. But we do hope that this pandemic will find a solution within a couple of months or at least will allow us to live in a more and more normal way. I think there are some questions that we have received from the control room. Actually, We'll try and answer some of these questions, but all questions will be answered starting from tomorrow if we can't cover them all here. Now, I'll take some questions. A journalist or an exhibitor says, which one of the product categories can, which ones can be better managed uh, through the digital platform, tractors uh, or other products? We believe that all products uh, have uh, complexities, uh, but they can all be implemented in the AMA digital preview. We don't think uh, that it's going to be easier or more difficult for one product or another. Another question, it is said that EDP will liven up the market. To what extent are fairs important for agricultural mechanics? Well, they're very important because the market of agricultural mechanics um, consists of a huge number of machines. So the fair is actually useful to show farmers, resellers, or, importer, or, or importers how large and diversified the Italian and South European manufacturing of specialized machinery is. 
how do uh, virtual meetings take place uh, with uh, foreign uh, delegations? Uh, well, actually, in the virtual rooms, uh, um, platform will cooperate uh, with the um, Italian Trade Agency and Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, platform. They will be uh, handled by all uh, um, agencies in the world. Uh, well, from 2022, uh, we will have the physical AIMA in November, and we will have the so-called fusion, combining the two experiences. Uh, our fair has to stay, but we have to use the digital platform in order to internationalize the fair in an increasing way. This pandemic was destructive to all the world, but has taught us something important. Will all exhibitors take part in the EDP? Yes. Another question is, how is uh, the EDP linked to the physical affair? Will all exhibitors take place? Uh, will all exhibitors take part in the EDP? Yes, all exhibitors are invited to participate in the EDP with the same commitment, with the same organizing effort because, you know, the digital preview, in our opinion, has to be uh, successful to open or pave the way to the uh, success of um, the physical fair. Now, for those that have registered to AMA no later than 20, 15, 20 uh, days ago, a list of formats of file video formats i mean technical sheets that have to be uploaded to the platform it will be made available early in september in order to upload contents and try out these contents okay all other questions and there's a number of them will be answered in writing in the next few days. Otherwise, we would spend a few hours here. We've selected only some questions. EDP participation, is it free of charge? Yes, for those that will participate in the physical form of AMA. I think we will uh, stop with the questions now. I'd like to thank all of you for spending this hour and 15 minutes with us. I'd like to invite uh, all of you to make uh, the EDP and physical AMA International Trade Show as successful as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much to everybody. We will have an opportunity to update you as work progresses. Thank you very much for your feedback. We've really received many questions, and this gives us an idea of how this world can be exciting, capturing the curiosity of everybody. It's a challenge for everybody. We believe that all together within the world of AMA International, we can really approach the near future together. Thank you.